age of the Mahdi is an age of intense struggle. And the hadith says he will stay with you for seven years. And maybe eight. And if it really extends nine years. And at the last campaign, the Muslims will come and the other side, its opposition will come to face it. And the opposition is so huge. 80 banners, 80 different flags, under each flag, 12,000 men. And when the two sides meet and the Muslims see this, a third of them will run away. And the Prophet wasallam says, Allah will never accept their repentance ever. Because running away reduces and destroys the morale of everyone standing. So then the campaign starts and the battle is hot in its intense and a third of the Muslims will die and a third will be victorious. Just a third will be victorious. So you would think after such a calamity, after such a colossal engagement, or what is referred to in the books that preceded us as Armageddon, you would have expected issues to become more relaxed. Yet, as they have just become victorious and are collecting the things of the battlefield, a voice will come out to them that all Muslims, the Dajjal has come in your lands. And the first of the Alamatul Kubra, the first of the major signs, is the advent of the Dajjal or the Antichrist. So the Imam Al Mahdi will send 10 people, 10 riders, to go and investigate and scout, see if the news is correct. And the Rasul says, Salawatu Rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi. I know their names. And I know the names of their fathers. And I know the color of their horses. They will be the best riders of the day. So they will go and see, Ah, the calamity has come. The Dajjal has come. Who is this Dajjal? The first of the big signs of Qiyamah. This is the story of Tamim al-Dari. Tamim al-Dari came to the Rasul and narrated a story. Ya Rasul Allah, I was in a ship and the ocean started to become rough and there's 30 other people with me. And the waves, you know, bashed us from pillar to post for a whole month. You know, it's tossing us between waves. And after a month, the waves subsided and we reached near an island and we anchored the ship and took a little boat and came to the island. And at the brink of the island, we saw a creature, the strangest we have seen, covered in hair to the extent that we couldn't tell its front from its behind. And they look at him, imagine the poor guys, you know, a month of, of seasickness. And now here, and they see this creature. So they said, woe be unto you, what are you? So he said, I am Jasasa. So they are hesitant and they say, we thought he's like a devil. So Jasasa said, there's a person in that monastery who is longing to see you. Go to him. And suddenly we saw in front of us a person, a man who was the biggest in build that we have yet to have seen. His arms were wrapped to his neck with chains like this. And his head and arms were also chained together to his knees, to his legs. We said, what are you? And he said, you are able to hurt me because I'm chained up. So it's my right to ask who are you first so I can ensure my safety. 
They said, very well. We are people from the Arabs. We rode, we set sail in our ship and a storm hit us until we became lost and landed on this island. And it led us to you. They said, we got afraid of this man and we, did, we didn't feel safe around him. However, the man said to us, tell me about the palm trees of Baisan. Baisan is a city in Jordan. And he wanted to know whether there were palm trees planted in there a lot. We said, what do you exactly want to know about Baisan in Jordan? He said, I ask you, are there more palm trees and have they be filled with dates or not yes. yet? They said, yes, it is full of palm trees and full of dates. He said, soon its palm trees and dates will become scarce. Today, really, in Jordan, dates are scarce now. He said, now explain to me about Buhayr al-Tabariya. He said, they said, yes, there is lots of water. He said, soon its water is going to go away. It's not going to exist anymore. And truly today, the water has gone drier than before. Then he asked them, he said, tell me about Zagar fountain. And Zagar fountain is uh, somewhere near Jerusalem, Beit al-Maqdis. They said, yes, it's got a lot of water and its people plant a lot. Tell me about a prophet who is Ummi, who is illiterate, cannot read or write. What has he done? They said he has come out in Mecca and now he lives in Yathrib, in Medina. He asked them, have his people fought him? They said, yes. He said, what did he do? They said, he was driven out by his own people. Them, really? Has that really happened? They said, yes. He said, أَمَا إِنَّ ذَاكَ خَيْرٌ لَهُمْ أَنْ يُطِيعُوهُ He said, behold, it is better for those people who obey him to keep on obeying him. وَإِنِّي مُخْبِرُكُمْ عَنِّي Now I'm going to tell you about myself. إِنِّي أَنَا الْمَسِيحِ I am Christ. Isa alayhi salam. He said, now very soon, based on the signs you've showed me, I'm going to be given permission to leave and I'm going to come out. I will walk throughout the land. He said, there, isn't, there wouldn't be a village or a city or a place on earth except that I would have reached it all in 40 days. The whole world in 40 days. All except two places, Mecca and Tiba, Medina. So the Rasul at this time narrating the story hit his member like this. He goes, Tayyiba, Tayyiba, this is Tayyiba. Medina is Tayyiba. He said, They are both forbidden for me to enter. Now, when we say he enters, it means he conquers, takes over, he owns it. He goes, every time I wanted to come into one of them, an angel will stand guard holding a, a sword and he will prevent me from entering Mecca and Medina. But Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started grabbing his, his, uh, his stick and sort of, he put it close to his, to his hip, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he began to bang, to hit the ground with it, like this. But he was sort of tense, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Something very important. He was really tense about it. And he hit the floor and he said, Ala hadihi tiba. Behold everyone, this is tiba. Meaning he's pointing, this is Medina. He's in Medina, he's saying, this is tiba. The people there didn't know what tiba is, a lot of them. And he said, this is tiba that he's telling you about. It's Medina, which you are in right now. He said, didn't I tell you that this man will come out and not be able to enter this land? They said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, because he had told them a lot about it before. He said, the hadith of Tamim and Dari, Wallahi amazed me as he told me about him. Because it's the same as what I used to tell you about Mecca and Medina. Behold, a Dajjal is somewhere in one of, near the oceans, in one of the, the island, on an island, somewhere towards the east, the east of Medina. Somewhere there, he said, in one of those oceans. Min qibal al mashriq mahu, towards the east, somewhere. So even the Prophet doesn't know exactly where he is, but in that direction. So it's close to the Middle East at the moment. And the Dajjal will become angry somehow, and he will rip. The chains off, Wallahu A'lam, 
and then he will be released. 